Anthony Joshua was maneuvered through the ranks, fighting very, very poor competition, was made number two, could have been the mandatory, and ducked Deontay Wilder for the easy route. Let's talk. Straighter, yep. not yep. a roundhouse right hand. And that's what we've been talking about, the straight shot is the one where he gets leverage on it. I don't want to kill Pull back for a, a little bit. Seconds. Nah, I want a body on my record. Now, I want to see you fight, motherfuckers. I do. All right? I'm with you. I'm with you. As long as as long as long you're trying to fight the great, the, your, or the, the, the best competition. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link if you dare to. Bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard. You get your sources from clowns. So when you come around, we're here. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link if you dare to. Bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard. You get your sources from clowns. So when you come around, we're here. Yo, it's the best fight, the best. If you ain't with the moto, just click the link, bitch, and get buried like the rest. It ain't gonna work how you want it. These trolls already tried, too many come but don't leave. So if you hear, you gotta die, spitting straight facts. These bitches cry cause they hate that. The LDBC's the top topic, bitch, hate that. We the best to bring the truth to these fans. So why you hate, I'ma laugh and keep counting these bands. Come to the graveyard, click the link, get the bands. Bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard, you get your sources from clowns, so when you come around, we don't hear you. Welcome to the graveyard, click the link if you dare to, bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard, you get your sources from clowns, so when you come around, we don't hear you. Welcome to the graveyard. Anthony Joshua started his career, his first fight, against um, some bum, Emmanuel Leo. Um, in 2013, he got a TKO, and then three fights later, he was ranked number 34 in the WBC. He was not ranked in any other sanctioning body. The WBC had him number 34. Then he fought Dorian Darch, 7-2. and two. Now, mind you, he had four, that was four, his fourth professional fight. So in four professional fights, he went from... Nothing to number 34 in WBC. So it's clear the WBC was pushing to have Anthony Joshua as their champion. His very next fight against Hector Alfredo Avila, 22-15-1. He went from number 34 to number 33. So he moved up three places by beating 22-15 Hector Alfredo Avila. His very next fight against Matt Leg, 7 and 2. He went from 31 to number 27 in the WBC. Mind you, this is all in a span of three months. From uh, February 2014 until May. 2014, he went from number 34 to number 27 by fighting 7 and 2 Dorian Darch, 22 and 15 and 1 Hector Avila, and then 7 and 2 Matt Lake. By September, when he fought 21, 19 and 2, unranked Konstantin Erich, all these guys are unranked. He went from number 27 in the WBC to number 19. In a WBC. Still not ranked by nobody else. Still. No other sanctioning body had him ranked. He was only ranked in the WBC. And he went from number 34 to number 19 by September of 2014. So between February and September, he moved up damn near 19 spots. The very next month, he fought... Dennis Bakhtov, unranked Dennis Bakhtov, the very next month, 38 and 9, Dennis Bakhtov. And he went from number 19 to number 13. So in one year, he went from not even a full year, from February until October, he went from number 34 to number 13. Well, the very next month, he fought Michael Sprott. 
and went from number eight, number 13 to number eight, beating 42 and 22 Michael Sprott. <laughs> and he was number eight in the WBC. He, when he fought Dennis Bakhtov, he fought for the WBC, for the vacant WBC international heavyweight title. So again, he was being groomed by the WBC. They were, they were push, pulling him along the rankings. All right. When he beat Dennis Bakhtov, he was number 13 in WBC and the, the WBC vacant, uh, he won the WBC vacant international heavyweight title. His very next fight against Michael Sprott, he went from number 13 to number eight. Mind you, it was a month later. He fought in October against Dennis Bakhtov. He fought in November, the same year, against Michael Sprott and went from number 13 to number 8, top 10 in the WBC. Also, that is when he touched the IBF rankings. And he jumped in the IBF rankings at number 15. He was not ranked nowhere in no other sanctioned body before that. He jumped into the rankings at number 15 in the IBF. Insane. By beating unranked Michael Sprott. Michael Sprott, who was not ranked in no sanctioned body at all. Not, he was not in the top 50 in any sanctioned body. But Anthony Joshua jumped from number 13 to number 8 by beating Michael Sprott. His very next fight, <laughs> the very next fight, which happened six months later, in April of 2015, was Jason Gavern, a man that Deontay Wilder had destroyed the year before. Destroyed this man. But Anthony Joshua, the WBC International Heavyweight Champion, um, beat Jason Gavern and moved from number eight in the WBC to number six in the WBC, all right? He beat a man who was unranked in any sanctioned body. Jason Gavin was ranked when Wilder fought him. He was ranked in the 30s, 20s or 30s when Wilder fought him. He was unranked when Anthony Joshua fought him, unranked. And still, Anthony Joshua moved from number eight to number six in the WBC, still number 15. In the IBF. The very next fight, he fights 36 and 10 Rafael Zambano. No movement from the WBC or IBF. He's still number six. His next fight, he fights 29 6 and 1 Kevin Johnson. He defends his WBC international heavyweight title against Kevin Johnson. And move from number six in the WBC to number two in the WBC. And he moved from number 15 in the IBF to number 13 in the IBF. So at this time, May 2015, he is number two in the WBC. Deontay Wilder won his belt in January 2015. January. So three, four months after Wilder won his WBC title, Anthony Joshua was ranked number two. In the same month, May 2015, the same month, Alexander Povetkin became the WBC mandatory to Deontay Wilder. All right? Which means Deontay Wilder had to fight Alexander Povetkin by May of 2016. He has one year to fight his mandatory at one year. So Povetkin became the mandatory in May 2015. Wilder had to fight this man by May 2016. By May 2016. All right. Wilder agreed to fight this man. They were supposed to fight in September. Or, or no, or yeah, September or October of that year, of 2015. But Povetkin wanted to fight in a, he wanted to fight in Russia before he, before he fought um, for the WBC heav uh, heavyweight title. And he was allowed to do so. So he fought Marius Walk instead. Meldonium was Ill, was legal. It was legal in 2015. Meldonium became illegal. January 1st, 2016. That's when it became illegal. All right. Alexander Povetkin is now ranked number one. Anthony Joshua is number two. 
Alexander Povetkin postponed his mandatory fight because he was supposed to fight um, Deontay Wilder um, at the end of 2015. He chose not to. So he postponed it. He was allowed to postpone it because, again, the fight needed to happen by May 2016. So he was allowed to postpone it. Deontay Wilder fought Johan Duopas and Eric Molina, and Povetkin fought Marius Wach. Povetkin got a little cut, so the fight was supposed to happen in January he, because Povetkin postponed the fight till January. So that fight was supposed to happen in January, but he got a little cut in the Marius Walk fight. So the fight got postponed until May. Um, Deontay Wilder ended up fighting Arthur Spilka instead of, instead of fighting Povetkin. Povetkin took drug test. He passed. He was part of the clean boxing program, so they needed to take drug tests. He passed. He took another drug test. He failed. <laughs> he failed. You know, and then the whole debacle came about, about how, oh, uh, meldonium was legal. It, it was only trace amounts. Although you had already took two, two drug tests and passed them. You took two drug tests and passed. But then you took another one, and then you failed it. The A and B. But mysteriously... It, the drugs was not caught in your system for the previous test you took and passed, but it was caught for the test after. And everybody says, oh, he's not he's not guilty. It was only trace amounts, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You know, the same type of stuff to do with Canelo. Trace amounts, a little bit. Raising the, raising the amounts to have in your system. It's things like that. Here's the, here's the dilemma. At that time, Anthony Joshua was ranked number two in the WBC, Anthony Joshua could have petitioned to fight for the to become the mandatory. You know, the same way Carlos Takam was when Kubrat Pulev couldn't fight. When Kubrat Pulev could not fight Anthony Joshua, they had Carlos Takam on deck. Well, Anthony Joshua, you could have been on deck. You chose to go a different route. These are facts. Anthony Joshua could have been the mandatory in replacement to Alexander Povetkin. The same way Carlos Takam became the mandatory when Kubrat Pulev, who was the mandatory, could not fight Anthony Joshua the exact same way. The reason why Anthony Joshua claims that he went the, the, the IBF route is because Charles Martin called him out. So he said the WBC, the IBF champion called him out, and that's why he went that direction. That is not what was said before. What was said before that was that Charles Martin got a he was selling his belt. Charles Martin he, he was offered a lot of money, and that's the reason why he's fighting. It's not for the for the glory or the legacy of the sport. It was because he was offered a lot of money. So you know, not the glory, not the legacy, not the warrior spirit. It was the bag. And because Charles Martin called him out. Well, here's the problem with that. Charles Martin called out Deontay Wilder before he called out Anthony Joshua. Yes. He called out Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury before he called out Anthony Joshua. That fight didn't happen between Charles Martin and... Deontay Wilder for another reason which I'll address in another video but for this one Anthony Joshua was ranked number two he was being groomed to fight for the for the WBC title he was number two in a WBC when Povetkin popped dirty he was number 13 in the IBF when Povetkin popped dirty correction he was number nine oh eight I'm sorry he was number eight in the IBF. Eight. When Povetkin popped dirty. He was he uh, moved up to number four. By the time Povetkin popped dirty the second time. For Meldonia. He was number four. Erkin Tepper was still ahead of him. He was number four. Now. Charles Martin fighting number four. Or number eight Anthony Joshua. In a voluntary. Is fair play. But you were number two. In the WBC. Deontay Wilder. Was clearly a bigger name. Than Charles Martin. 
Clearly, not even close. Clearly a bigger name. Clearly a bigger fight. You were number two behind a man who was eventually stripped of his number one status, which means you would have been the mandatory to Deontay Wilder. But you went the easy route, the IBF route, against Charles Martin, who won his title in a fluke. You, Anthony Joshua, would have been fighting Deontay Wilder. You, as a WBC, you would have been a WBC mandatory. The same way that Carlos Takam was your IBF and, play, and replaced a Pulev, you would have been Deontay Wilder's uh, WBC mandatory in replace of Povetkin. You know, people were saying nobody wants to see Wilder versus Stavern rematch and blah, blah, blah. Well, they would have never seen it had you stayed where you was at. Had you petitioned to be the mandatory when you were ranked number two in Pavek and Pop Dirty and was stripped of his mandatory status. But I know nobody wants to talk about that. History is a motherfucker. BFTB. Shout out to the mighty, mighty LDBC, and I'm out.